Morning, St. Luke. This is Pastor Jared. Still feels a little weird to hear that word in front of my name. This weekend, I'm looking forward to sharing with the Word of God with you, and I wanted to prime the pump a little, or as I've learned Pastor Barry and Pastor Ben say, I want to plant an idea in your head. When I sit down to write a sermon, the first thing I do is pray for God's direction and blessing. The second thing that I do is choose a text to preach on. The church throughout history has followed what's called a lectionary. Each week there are four appointed readings, a psalm, a selection from usually the Old Testament, and other from the writers of the New Testament letters like Paul, Peter, and John, and finally a gospel reading. After I have prayed, I'll read through each of these readings multiple times, thinking and praying which I should use to base my message on. Sometimes there seems to be easier readings to choose from than others. Texts that seem to sort of write the sermon for me, while others seem to be more difficult and might demand a little bit more work. This week was one of those weeks. The words of Jesus in this week's gospel are such hard words. The first verse, Jesus says, Do not think I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. You'll hear more about that in the sermon, but I wanted to take a moment to think about when we are faced with conflict or challenging words. Do you run from conflict? Do you avoid it altogether at all cost? Or are you the opposite kind of person? Do you run straight at it, taking it head on? When I read for the first time this Sunday's reading, I wanted to run. Yet, Jesus doesn't seem to run from conflict. In fact, the opposite seems to be true here. Jesus speaks directly to it, and even walks directly into conflict. Have you ever experienced conflict because you follow Jesus? What choices have you had to make that may have seemed weird or even wrong to others? It is too easy to say that we follow Jesus and yet, if someone were to look at our lives, they may not see any difference in the way that we live. I believe that one of the reasons we struggle with this is because we don't want to feel conflict with others around us. We have a deep and rightly held need to belong and to be part of a community. But at times, this leads us to be quiet instead of speaking out. We turn the other way instead of acting. We just get in line and follow after the world around us because we are afraid of the conflict that will come from being different. Today, hear this. You and I may go confidently into conflict because our Lord has gone before us. In Jesus' death and resurrection, he has overcome the world and everything that has or ever will put us into conflict. So go into your world, not afraid, but confident. Not, conf that, not that conflict is a sign of your right living, but confident that you follow the one who has overcome the world and will one day return when all conflict will cease. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you that you have sent your son to overcome the world, to overcome everything. And we confess the times in which we have been quiet, when we have ceased to speak, and when we have ceased to act. But yet we praise you that with you there is forgiveness, and that even in our silence, and even in our inaction, you are still working. And so we pray today that you would give us confidence. Confidence to act in the face of conf conflict, and confidence to live differently, in the hope and knowledge that Jesus has overcome the world. We pray this all in his name. Amen. I have two discussion questions again for you today. Question number one. How do you usually react whenever you encounter conflict or challenging words? Why do you, rethink, why do you think you react that way? Question two. How does your faith play into the way in which you react and deal with conflict. Have a wonderful day today.